All right, folks, welcome back. We are now in section 4.4, trigonometric functions of any angle. So we've kind of been focusing primarily on the first quadrant and, and looking at the different trig functions in, of those angles. But now we're going to expand that into all of the different quadrants. So we're going to have to first establish some, um, some variables and some of the formulas, but a lot of these should be similar uh, familiar once you see them in relation to the coordinate system. So the first thing uh, we have theta is going to be our angle and it's going to be in standard position. So remember the initial side is the positive x-axis and the terminal side could be in any of the different quadrants. So it's going to have a point xy that's on that terminal side of angle theta and r is going to be equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared and of course that can't be equal to zero. Given all those different things, we can now establish our formulas. So sine of theta is y over r, cosine x over r, tangent is going to be y over x, cotangent x over y, secant r over x, cosecant r over y. So again, we can't have y be equal to zero in these cases, and of course we can't have x equal to zero in these cases. So, but again, these other three will be easy because they're just the reciprocal of the first three. So, now the important part of all of this is the signs, not to be confused with S-I-N-E, but S-I-G-N. So the signs of X and Y is going to be important for this application. So now, the one thing we should remember from before is that we know the signs in those various quadrants because remember, sine is related to the Y values and cosine is related to the x values. So that's how these signs, S-I-G-N, S, are determined. So now, if we go into our first problem, not really a lot here, but there is a drawing from the textbook, so I already stole that and put that into the notes. And the question simply wants to know, what are the six trigonometric functions for this picture? Now, because we already have x and y, the only thing that's lacking would be r. So we first need to find r, and I think we can quickly see that if we plug everything in, that's going to give us the square root of 25, which is 5. So r is 5. We can kind of see that it's just going to be a 3, 4, 5 triangle, one of our nice Pythagorean triples. So let's plug and jug. So if we want the sine of theta, that's going to be y over r. So y in this case is 3, r is 5. So 3 fifths cosine should be x over r. So x is 4. So 4 over 5. Tangent should be y over x. So 3 over Four. And then cotangent, oops, so if I make a T there, it's just going to be the reciprocal, so 4 over 3. And then we have the secant, which is the, co, uh, the reciprocal of cosine, so 5 over 4. And then we got cosecant, which is the reciprocal of sine, so 5 over 3. And there we have it. Now again, just be careful of the directions. Make sure if they want it as a fraction, you write it as a fraction. Or if they want it as a decimal, you can also do that as well. But the directions in my lab, uh, excuse me, in WebAssign will tell you uh, what you need to do. All right, let's just do one more just to make sure we have it down. So we have an angle now is in the second quadrant. So this is our angle theta. It's in the second quadrant, and so we can see that the x value better be negative and the y value is positive. So that is going to affect our answers a little bit. So we should have our r first. I'm jumping the gun here. So we want to make sure we get r first. So just be careful. The negative is going to be included when you square it, so it changes it to positive. And so if we 
square root 64 plus 225 looks like square root of 289. If my memory serves me, that might be 17. So now we have our, so now we can get our trig functions. So co, uh, sine should be y over r, so 15 over 17. Cosine is going to be x over r, so it will be a negative value. And then tangent should be y over x, so 15 over negative 8, or let's just make the whole fraction negative, negative 15 eighths. And let's keep going. So we got cosecant. It doesn't matter what order you do these in. This is as long as you know which ones give you which values. So remember, cosecant is related to sine. So we just have to take the reciprocal. Then we got secant, which is going to be the reciprocal of cosine. So negative 17 over 8. And last but not least cotangent, which would be negative 8 over 15. And that wraps that up. So pretty quick, once you get your R, make sure you get that first, and then you should be able to answer all those trig values. So that is a good place to stop for this video. So we'll jump into more exercises in the next one. So see you in a minute.